Welcome to Fontribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Fontribute. This is Thomas Jockin. I'm here with Aaron again. Hey, Aaron. Hi. And <laughs> we got another episode today. So, Aaron, what are we talking about today? Today, we have two um, typefaces created for newspapers. We have Berlingska, which was created by Playtype, and uh, San Sanomat, which was created by Commercial Type. So, yeah, that was the attributes, right? Like, that's, that was the brief. It was for, both for edge for, for newspaper usage, right? Oh, yes. So, you know, seeing them both at this view, I would say, wow, they kind of look quite similar. They have um, the same sort of like large X heights, kind of, you know, low A senders and D senders. The caps are kind of, you know, shorter than we typically see. And that's something that you see in a lot of um, type, typefaces made for newspapers in this day and age. Yeah, so what are you saying? I mean, I agree. They definitely, at this scale and this page size, they seem, you see a lot of similarities in their skeleton, right? In their proportions. Uh, you want to get into basically how they're different or how they approach the project differently? Yeah, I guess we could, if you want to zoom in right away, we can kind of see what makes these look different on the up close scale. Great. Okay. So, what, Aaron, what's the first thing you were looking at the end? You know, lowercase n, what are we seeing that between the two of them? Definitely we see that the serif approach is very, very different. Um, what would you call that on Sanomat? Son uh, Sanomat. Was, Sanomat. Was that just a... <laughs> what kind of serif would you describe that as? Is that just like wedge serif? What would you yes, say? Yes, wedge. That was yeah. obviously wedge. Okay, right. And then we have on the right here, like, I don't know if that... Is that called like a glyphic or flared sort of serif? What would you say that... Is <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely say it would flare. I think flares, I definitely I don't think bracketed. It's a kind of bracket. Right? Bracket. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh it's interesting because it's you know it reminds me of um you know kind of those painted serifs from you know Roman days where they kind of just swoop upward. It's it's a really like elegant fluid movement, but um, Sanomat is more you know we've got kind of those cuts. It's a little bit more. You know, it's very, whoops, a very abrupt right there. Um, whereas we have the nice fluid motion over here. Whoops, let me move this over. Eh, 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 okay. <laughs> so what else, what else is different about these? Or what, how do we think that impacts the design if the serifs are different? Well, definitely, I mean, one thing I definitely noticed, I was a little surprised about as a newspaper phase was how sharp those serifs are in Bernletsky. I can't pronounce that for my life, but uh, <laughs> the one on the right, we'll call it that. Um, the, the sharpness of this is, I mean, kind of surprising. It's it's so sharp, I mean, compared to, you know, it's not like Semomat Simo, is particularly uh, heavy with their serifs, but it's certainly not to the same degree of tapering and thinness going to a point uh, we saw in Berlinske, again, pronunciation, mm -hmm. probably saying that horribly wrong, but <laughs> uh, that's the one thing I definitely noticed. Also, how their flag serifs are treated, you know, uh, you know, basically between kind of a more kind of beak shape on the left versus mm -hmm. kind of this cupping effect, right? So it's the, the, I think the flavoring is a little different because it seems almost like some of more like straightforward and kind of blunt in this approach about it. Well, mm -hmm. Berlinske is more kind of, it wants to be kind of more flowing and kind of uh, extravagant in its attitude and how it renders, how it's rendering coming to this point in a very sharp sure. way. Sure. You know, one other thing I noticed now that we're looking at these up close is that the serif, serifs on uh, Berlinske are, are, I would say like they look a little bit longer, like they create a little bit more of um, like white space in the, the box here in the rectangle. Like, check out how much space is kind of like between the side bearing and the stem versus here. It's like a little bit more narrow, I would say. So that's actually going to impact um, kind of the the looseness or the feeling of the typeface as well. Like when you see it in a word. So that's also something interesting to notice when you know, depending on how long your serifs are, they're going to affect your spacing. Yes, I was I was I was noticing that as well. You know, semomat is much 
it's very tight fitting. Like, mm -hmm. and, uh, I pro I, from my research about that project, and my understanding is this is supposed to be kind of a duplex face where the Seraph and Sans Seraph editions match each other. Oh. Or the, or the minimum, the, the, all the weights match together. Wow. So I think probably dealing with those conditions or issues, uh, this decision that let the Seraphs be very short, basically, mm -hmm. might, might explain that, that decision. Yeah, that would make sense. Totally. Yeah. Ooh. So one, yeah, one other thing, I guess, while we're at the end, we haven't talked about this um, or mentioned this, but there's also kind of a slight difference. If you see this, this like shoulder area here, the Sanomat one is a little, it's a bit more kind of like flat on the top here. And then the, cur you know, I don't know, it, it looks a little more curved, like a little bit more of a, of a gentle curve on uh, Burlingska. Which, you know, it seems really subtle, but then when you look at the typeface as a whole, you might notice that a little bit more, that Sanomet maybe feels a little bit more um, kind of structured. There's a little bit more kind of directionality and tension up here at the right corner. Yeah, I, I was noticing that too, between the two profiles. It's kind it's uh, a kind of a squareness, right, in Sanomet mm -hmm. that uh, is not there, particularly in the right example, Berlinske. And... Yeah, because I, I noticed that too. The profiles are different. You can even you can actually see almost kind of where the busy points kind of end, right? Like, see, sure, yeah, this yeah. Positioning versus, I'd probably guess like this positioning. Yeah, it probably is higher higher up. Yeah, there's a little bit more like abruptness to that. Yeah, it's higher up. Right. It's kinda, it's a steeper angle. Yeah. In some yeah. Now that's some serious. That's like like type design detail focus. Uh, even what the point position is, how that can change the profile of your curves. Totally. Tiny changes make a big difference. It's very cool to see. Yeah. Woohoo. So before we move on, one thing you also know is kind of seeing the thinness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. So this, see, this, this was interesting is actually in both cases for newspaper faces. That I, um, I guess my expectation would be a very low contrast face, right? Mm -hmm. Yet. Uh, well, first of all, obviously the serves of Berlitzke is like super razor thin, so mm -hmm. it's already make surprising an expectation. But the this kind of joint area region in both cases are very thin. Uh, I think uh, Berlitzke is thinner, right, than Semomat, but it's still relatively thin. There's a certain thinness of this joint that uh, it's a little surprising. It was not what I expected. Yeah, me neither. But maybe they have much nicer. Uh, printing presses in uh, Scandinavia or something. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> our assumption when we see newspapers, we think they're really bad conditions, really coarse paper. Yeah, yeah. who knows? I don't know. But then again, you know, they know more than I do. I've never designed a successful typeface for newspapers before, and these folks know what they're doing. So <laughs> I'm sure they've done a lot of testing while they were doing this. So it, it's yeah. interesting to see. Goodness. Yeah, and just last note too to notice is again notice just let's compare that thin, the super razor mm. thinness at the ends, right versus this thinness. So he, yeah, I think kind of a you know when you're learning type design, it kind of rules make everything the same, right? Make be a logic have logic in your in your conditions of like your parts, and it's just interesting to note when that's not always the it has to be the case. You can let variance happen, so. Yeah. Yeah. You can say, okay, my thins are this thin in this region, like in the joints, and then there are a different thinness in my serifs, my terminals and my serifs, for example. Yeah, definitely. You don't have to always, you know, if you're if you're drawing type, you don't always want to go by what is, you know, mathematically the same distance and stuff. That'll that'll um, end up in, you know, you have to trust your eyes, I guess, is what it's a, what we're trying to say um, when you make these decisions about weight. That looks much better the way they did it than if they had very thin joint there, I would say. I, I, was, I would probably suspect it would break the typeface. You know, it would just... Mm -hmm. wouldn't yeah, it looked like a stencil typeface or something. It would yeah. Too exactly. shiny. Too silvery. Great so, move. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to our default round character that we look at for all of these font tributes. The O. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that I noticed we need that analysis in the shoulders of the ends. We can mm -hmm. see that play out in the rounds here as well oh yeah we've got kind of a more square i would you know if an o can be square it it would be this one i suppose you know it's kind of a, a little bit more rectangular of, of a shape you kind of see like this is a, i mean it feels a little bit flatter like look at the counter i mean i don't want to fill up the entire 
shape here with my drawings, but that count that counter looks a little bit more square and flat than the very um, fluid oval here and very round O, I would say over here. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree because <laughs> you can see a couple things. One is kind of see where the white kind of pushes out and mm -hmm. these four corners right here, right? Comparing that to the, you know, the Berlinski O, uh, it's kind of more shallow, right? The curves are more are not as square. They're more shallow in the counter, mm -hmm. right? So at least in that relationship. Uh, and then combine that with the outer the outer outline you're pointing out. Um, you know, if I, if I drew a square around this, you know, the amount of white yeah. is much tighter, right? In the semel, semel mat edition versus this one right here. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot more a lot more negative space in that round when you have that round O, um, and then also to look kind of you know the same in the same vein like you know it's a it's a lot more kind of flat on this side here. There's like it's just kind of a little bit of a point kind of touches the side here. Um, so again, with that rectangular shape, it's it's a little bit different, and there's also kind of a difference in contrast too. To me, this feels a little bit thicker than. Um, you know, the side of this O. And this portion here feels thicker and thinner in Berlingske. So that goes again with kind of the contrast we were seeing then. Gosh, these look so strange once we draw all over them. It's quite funny. They look like little cartoon characters. Little characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have piercings and stuff. I know, great. Like and little ears too. And horns, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, but I think I, I agree with all your, with basically all your analysis. I And I, and kind of, I guess, a takeaway for people listening is notice that there's a certain DNA that gets carried through, right? In a certain aspect of the N, your O has to respond to it in some way. So the kind of shallowness or squareness of your curves in the N shoulder, for example, got carried over to these approaches and implications. And even things like the length of the serifs in Berlinski's N, remember we talked about how there's more white space around it? This got applied also in the O as well. There's more kind of white space around the shapes uh, compared to uh, semel mat. Uh -oh. What's up? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, never mind. Oh, I can hear you. It went it went silent for a moment. I thought we lost you. Never mind. Nope, I'm right um, here. Woohoo. So yeah, now that we've kind of like looked at that a little bit more rectangular um, as the kind of profile of Sanomat. Should we like see what happens when we combine the straight and the round together in the next letter? Ooh. Got it. Very exciting. <laughs> Yippee. So, so uh, Sanomat, I would say again, it kind of has a little bit more of a kind of rectangular feel for the bowl of the D, but Berlingske, I mean, it's, it's, it is a little bit, it really takes a, an, I have to like squint to kind of just and set my head back a little bit um, to really see that, you know what, it actually is a little bit more round and protrudes a little bit more than uh, the Sanomat. It's, it's not as round as the O, of course, it doesn't need to be, but you know, it feels a little bit different here. And it's kind of funny how like the counter form is really kind of interesting. Like, We've, we've kind of got this area that thickens up right here as it joins um, the uh, <laughs> joins the stem, yeah. and then we've got like kind of opposing. You know, we've got a lot of like weird directionality here that like doesn't feel as prominent in Sanomat. It feels a little bit more kind of like um, a little bit more straight up and down of a uh, stress. What do you think? Yes, I would, I, I would agree with all those points, right? I think part of it is just kind of the squareness, right? You Notice know, the length of this area, right? Versus over here, even his positioning. Kind of, mm -hmm. I, I can imagine where the thickest, the busy point is for there. Here, if I actually, I'd probably guess like right here, right? Versus over here. So just the, the curve profiles on this quadrant, notice the square, like kind of the squareness of this curve just relative to the steepness in mm -hmm. this one. And that leads to just this, as you're noticing, this kind of momentum difference, you know, there's a certain up, it feels like this is very upright. Yeah. Well, this is kind of pushing, like, it's like the outline, the outer curve is pushing downward here, like it's pushing mm -hmm. downward here. Meanwhile, the counter is pushing up like this, yeah. right? So just like this more like different components with completely different momentums 
coming together to become stable as a result. And that led to things like you're talking about, like the thickening of this area to the adding to the stem. Mm -hmm. And it, some of that has that too, but just not the same degree, right? Yeah. yeah. And we can see that because the counter just it's it, its push is not as extreme in both ways, right? Yeah, definitely. I would say it feels like, you know, a lot more like stable and rational or something. And Berlingske seems a little bit more like calligraphic kind of, I don't know. It's got, it's got pizzazz. Is that a technical term? Pizzazz. I don't know. <laughs> the pizzazz, man, I love the way the serifs like, um, gosh, I just, I, I'm loving this shape, how it kind of mimics the curve we've got going here. It looks so good in this one. Oh, I love it. Ooh. Um, not to say I don't love Sanomat. I do. It's very, uh, <laughs> it's stable. It's very stable, but I really love the way these, you know, like little pointed terminal bits of the serif are just so sharp and, and really distinctive. It's, it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. And across the board, we can also see, again, we talked before how in the big first slide, a kind of the X height positioning, right? Mm, yeah. I always find that's a challenge. I always, I always find very short ascenders kind of difficult to manage. Uh, I think they kind of they cause some imbalance issues, or mm. it's challenging mm -hmm. because you have like this very big bulbous shape on the on the X height zone that you have to compensate with this very teeny tiny ascender and descenders to like yeah harmonize. Yeah. So I find that I find that in general, especially when you have these kind of curve momentums, how to harmonize them well. Right. I think it's kind of why the newspaper faces are very challenging. The design for that reason sure man you know now that i'm looking at these again um it might be worthwhile to note like it's kind of cool to compare the lengths of of these so okay if we're if we're talking about this this part of the serif right here and this you know this part right right here and then compare the length in sanomat we've got like the bottom one is a lot longer than the little top overhang. So that's also kind of a detail to note, like something that you might not normally notice, but if you kind of like zoom in and take a look at typefaces a little bit more closely, you might notice some of these different um, kind of conventions on what look what might look right or versus wrong, like what gives stability and what give is, gives too much darkness. And depending on kind of your approach, um, you might need to, to make kind of different proportional uh, choices you know, depending on what kind of serif you're going for, or diff different proportions. I don't know. Yes. And I think it's interesting to note that, right? Like, I've, I've definitely done that tactic as well in my designs, you mm -hmm. know, making the top serif, top flag serif of a D shorter on the top. Then it's sure. it's more, it's baseline uh, foot serif, right? Yeah. Uh, or exactly this reading of balance, right? It felt like it would be too long and just kind of falling mm -hmm. over. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great point that you observe that. Yeah, I think yeah, I think since Berlingske is, is it's like a little bit more like a you know a gentle like a, a th that it looks more like a flag or some kind of like little I don't know it because it gets so much thinner. I think it's okay that it's longer like that on the top. I think that's why it works in that in this design versus Sanomat would have been it just would have been too heavy. It would have felt yeah. too uh, closed off. I don't know. Excellent. All so, right, next slide. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Okay. Ah, uh, the G. <laughs> tell me your thoughts. You begin, please. Yeah. So I think I'll, one thing we can tell is again, it's it's always a challenge. Just the general notice again. Notice like where the decent. Probably my bet. My guess is probably the baseline is over here. It's probably my guess. Something like that in this region. Just this challenge of balancing the compart compartments. Right. When you know you have a very short A center, D center, your top bowl area has to be drawn in a way that feels comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a small feat. I think a lot of designers have a hard time making it work. Um, looks like the decision in, in someone met to solve that was to make this a very wide base below to give this spine enough time to, to curve over, right, and back mm -hmm. and around. So I think that was probably the solution to harmonize that zone next to the top bowl er kind of bowl area of the of the G. Yeah, that top, the top, uh, the top counter or bowl or blah, whatever head of the G. <laughs> it's it's a lot larger. Well, not a lot, but in 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 this kind of micro or uh, micro look at the typefaces, it seems a lot larger than the Berlingske one. I would say, and like you were saying, this this kind of like 
um, amount of space in between here. It feels a little bit more airy to me in uh, Berlingske. It it's, feels a little bit more, I guess, delicate in a way or something. Sanomat, because this is so wide, like you described, it feels um, very, very sturdy, very bold. Like it, it's, it, I think draws a lot of attention to itself. And with this cut here, I mean, you can't kind of ignore the cut. That's a very distinctive feature of this typeface, I would say. From the G. Yes, the uh, the open okay. loop. Open yes. loop. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think and probably the, part of the reason. Oh, oh go on. <laughs> Man, that now that I'm looking at these like holy mackerel. This is this is pretty funny. Like this uh this is so huge here. This like this taper this is a very um oh I hate drawing all over it because then nobody can see what I'm doing. Um it's interesting to see the the stress here and and how thick and wide it gets in the abrupt taper tapering versus this which is just very kind of thin compared to this thick area it they've just decided to make this left part this like you know a, a much thinner so they could probably get away with this cut here it's just it's a very very interesting I, wow i didn't notice that before <laughs> there you go yeah. <laughs> things you learn i know by focusing on things it's um yeah i would i I would say probably part of the issue with some of Matt is that it has to balance with these very tight spacings. Yeah. Like the fit of the, the letter fit of several mat super tight. So when you have fundamentally the problems of like a G, which is going to have right, like this space over here, mm -hmm. right. It has to, you have to balance it out somehow. So I think probably I have a feeling probably, uh, that's why, for example, the top bowl is so bigger. Like it's, yeah. it's trying to fill that space as much as it can. Uh, and I think just the question of, uh, yeah, basically, I guess they made the decision that the, you know, the main spine was the most priority, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the loop connection was secondary, so we can, like, thin it out in a way that we're not, you know, the more traditional method done by Berlinske, in this case, where there's a consistent thickness, as you pointed out here, versus... Right. Yeah, there's a lot more weight on the, you know, down here in this in this region. Um, and you know, they had they had a lot of extra kind of white space in you know, up in this area because we were talking about the fitting versus here. So, you know, that makes sense that they're able to put more weight down here in the bottom left. And also to notice, you know, again, like we were saying the serifs on the other letters, like, you know, this ear here is a lot shorter than the ear was able to be in the Berlingske, which is also kind of, you know, a similarity. Yeah, which is I know I was going to comment. I was very I was, I was kind of surprised by the fact <laughs> that their ears were so similar. They're these triangular style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh wow, unexpected. I was assuming, quite frankly, yeah. some of Matt was going to be like one of these, <laughs> like sure. right, a rectangular ear right, instead. Right, right. Uh, so that was surprising. Also, some, one thing I has noticed now. Do you notice that the the contrast system of this G is different from the other letters? In some of for example, the D, remember that had this, it kind of had this profile like this. It had a slight stress orientation. Yeah, yeah. A little, yeah, very, yeah, subtle, but it did a little bit. It did. Yeah. No, but notice down here on this contrast, it basically switches over from like a more calligraphic sourcing mm -hmm. or pointed pen. No, excuse me, broadened pen, sure, but sure. Uh, structure, right? Basically, that's why there's a certain thickness in this quadrant over here, remember in the D. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in the spine over to the loop, it, it basically goes into a, a quick thinness and it stays that thinness much longer. Contrast that to Berlinske, again, it that's felt a more traditional stress, right? Thick gets the thin and then gets thickened up again over here. This is why I like to design low contrast typefaces. This is too confusing. It's too many, it's no, hard to, <laughs> it's hard to like figure out how these should relate and like, you know, who, at what times, what counter should be a little stressed and which one shouldn't. Oh, it's too complicated. Bah. But um, yeah, good observations. Yeah, man, it's fun. I just, I noticed, I'm noticing this. I'm seeing, because oh that's God. a, Ugh. I think, I think it's part, it, there probably are a lot of reasons for that. Probably one was strategy, just, you know, you got to control the weights yeah. where you put the stuff, especially if you're going to, I think that's probably why they can get away with this kind of thinner terminal, open the mm -hmm. loop edition. Mm -hmm. was because they switched the contrast model uh, from a broad nib to a pointed pen model. There you go. I believe you are correct. Man, I'll agree that. with that. I'll agree with that. 
I mean, <laughs> do you, do you, I mean, am I making sense? Am I, am yes, I making no, 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 you make sense. Yeah, you make sense. I'm, uh, yeah, now I'm just thinking about like, oh, I, I can't remember. Okay, so we saw a little bit of, of uh, directionality in that D, and I can't remember what's. I had to scroll up. I wanted to go back and look to see where. Yeah, let's do it. Might okay. as well go back. Yeah, I have to compare. <laughs> There's too many, too much scribble, too many scribbles all over it. Anyway, okay, maybe we shouldn't. I'm sorry. Should we go? Let's go to the S. Let's go to the S because this not is not an issue. Yeah, but I, I, before uh, closing, Mark on this, oh. I decided. I, it's just kind of again really surprising to see. Uh, it's like everything's the same until they're not. Even to the point where you might even change your contrast model, uh, yet it still works. I think that's kind of the surprise of Semelman I'm seeing here that I kind of call, I was very surprised about. I'm like, whoa, look at this. And I didn't even catch my eyes an issue uh, or, a, or a really jarring surprise. You know, it's fascinating. But yes, we can, <laughs> we can move on to yes. Fascinating. Fascinating. Oh, Oof. look at those. Look at the Berlingska S. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love sharp. Um, you like the sharpiness? Yeah, sharp little beaks so much. God, I love it. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. But Sanama, I mean, that's interesting too. Because when I was reading about the typeface, they were saying that the, I guess I did remember, yes, they had the Sans version that they were kind of trying to make this relate to. And they were describing something about, you know, oh, it's, it's, referencing like Optima and some of the typefaces that have the um, sort of flared sans serif terminal thing. And then as soon as I saw the S of this serif design, I was like, oh yeah, that feels kind of Optima-ish to me. Like it's, <laughs> it's funny how like, you know, this one's so much more uh, bold and distinctive and whatever. And like, it's funny that I like really notice how small that is. It's like very, it's something very observable. I don't know why, like as soon as I see that, the thinness of that beak, it just really stands out to me. I don't know. But then again, you know, like we were saying, the ser the serifs had to be a lot smaller on Sanomat because of the tightness. So if you put too much darkness on it, you know, that's that S is really going to close up. So I guess they, when you have tight, uh, tight letter spacing, you kind of can't put as much weight up there. But Berlingske got away with really th thick, dark terminals. I love it. Or uh, beaks. Except I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just. I'm just uh, blabbing. Please tell me your. No, it's all, it's all good. A couple of things we're seeing here. One is, I think tying into that. Remember how the G, the turn, the loop had that kind of thinner than expected structure yeah, at the end. Right, right. 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 So we're seeing that similar model. So it's, we're seeing how pieces are kind of being harmonized together. Right. Mm -hmm. The reason why these terminals can be kind of this very subtle serif treatments. Right. Almost more like as an Optima edition. Right. Uh, one, it makes sense because it's correlating to its serif, sans serif edition, but two, because there's other comp other letters where the compartments are working like that. You know, contrast mm -hmm. that to what we see in Berliske, a more expected weight in that terminal serif, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then along the way, too, uh, it seems like the, uh, you know, as a result of, the, of these curvatures, right, it basically means now the rest of the spine has to compensate for that, right? You notice how deep kind of the the curve profiles are? Whoa. <laughs> that was unexpected. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah, basically look at where the curves are pushing this way and this way between the two mm -hmm. versus the kind of more smoother, gradual movements. Yeah, these these like areas they do seem a lot more square, you know, like like we were observing elsewhere. Um, it's it's so much more flat, you know, like like yeah. we've been saying. And this this has a lot more of that negative space. It's so much more round. It really kind of swoops in. And you know, it's interesting to see like you know we've got kind of tension going this way, like weird tension kind of going that direction. You know, it's it's interesting to see the contrast. You know, it isn't like a complete. Um, you know, absolutely complete, smooth, uh, circular form here. We've got, we do have a little bit of, of tension going in different directions here um, yeah. in the spine. It's very cool. Gosh. Ooh. We can also, yeah, no, see things you can see. It's amazing. Ooh, and, it's, uh, fun. <laughs> it's fun. Also, you can even tell like how this, again, kind of like we saw how on the shoulder of the N, it was a different profile relationship. Mm-hmm. 
you know, in terms of where, how shallow or square the curve profiles were, I'm seeing the same thing in the S now, in the sense of like if I marked where probably the Bezier curves are on the spine. So I'm gonna guess like over here and over here. Here is the vertical. Whoa, hi. I'll do the same over here. If I, if I put that, compare that to some of that, I'm going to guess probably here and here. Like, do you see that? Notice how much further away, they, like, there's a certain relationship, especially like on this, this to this, compared to this to this. Basically, there's a certain cutting, like, the shallow, there's a shallowness in the curves here and here. I think because of where the busy points were, were placed. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It does. The only issue okay. is now, once we've drawn on this, then I don't remember what the shape looks like because it's covered in drawings. Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> just, uh, I'm just No, no. Well, it, it'll be fun to go back and like look at this. Plus, also, as a reminder, we're, uh, we looked at these um, typefaces on font stand. So that's a good place to like kind of t check out um, typefaces and kind of look at them and, and you know, rent them and stuff. But just wanted to yes. put a, you know, I, I wasn't paid to say that. I'm just saying, check out font stand. It's cool. You get to look at these typefaces and try them out. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. Oh gosh. And again, like I'm obsessed. I love space. I love negative space. I like white space. It's very fun for me. Um, I like seeing how, you know, just the difference again in, in spacing here, like look how much more space is up here. And that's why this, this S here, like it seems a little bit more, um, the, the top half is like a, a bit shorter, or actually the whole thing is a bit narrower than the yeah. um, sentiment type uh, S, I would say. I always find that interesting to see how people balance the top and lower half of, of an S shape. Like Oh, constantly. Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's it. There's kind of a lot of wiggle room, I would say. You see a lot of different approaches. Yeah. So, I think anyway. it's funny. I, I feel like a lot of typeface designers uh, make their S's lean back. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> in, my, in my taste and preference, I'm like, you're making your S's leaning back. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I mean, again, so we kind of seen the program we saw in the other letters now apply to the yes. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, okay, now we're starting to get into some more differences, I would say. The next slide. Ah, yeah. Yes. What are your thoughts on the A? There's a big difference here. Big round, dangly ball difference. That's my first thought. <laughs> What's ball your thought? Terminal. Yes. Ball terminal, yes. <laughs> oh no, actually there's there's tons of changes. What am I there's tons of differences. Okay, we can talk about terminals first, shall we? Yeah. So yeah. I think I think a big note too is just again, like I've seen other typefaces do this too. You know, even what terminals they use. Like I think in a type in a type if I you know, if someone was doing a typeface design project for the first time, they probably we definitely be told all your terminals have to be the same. And there's logic for that, I understand. Right, you want you may, we want to make sure people are on the right page or what they're doing. Uh, but I just seen from experience looking at typefaces being produced, you know, designers will make different terminals for different letters. They get a different color and aesthetic in their typeface project. So this ball terminal, we didn't see that in the S. You know, for example, right, you know, right. We got we got beaks, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't get we didn't get a beak S in this one, you know, <laughs> or probably. Be more. <laughs> that there you go no beaky a no a beaky. round ball terminal a and with a very thin um you know that's a very thin little connecting stroke there too that was kind of surprising i thought right exactly yeah. for, the, for, the, for the reason you <laughs> expected which is isn't that going to just feed out to oblivion <laughs> uh yes i would agree and but anyway, well, it'll it'll it's interesting to see how it'll relate to our next letter. But we'll we'll get to the next letter later. Not but yeah, the sentiment again, like it's it's interesting to see. Um, you know, again, we have that very tiny, subtle, just like the S. Uh, you know, reminds me of Optima. That's the only typeface I ever think of when I see these types of things. Very also, you know, very kind of flat, um, flat top curve here, where you know it goes down much further here in Berlingske. So that's also an interesting um, feature to note. And like, I mean, golly, this is, I find this is a really big difference here, the way they treat these bowls. Like, 
this <laughs> I don't, I've never been a fan of these types of A's, but the you know the weird kind of um, yeah. <laughs> teardrop oh, shapes. Yeah. I don't like these kind, but whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. What's it called? A teardrop sort of thing. Yeah, you know, like that's, teardrop. yeah. You know, it always seems like it's melting. Like I I really think like look how big that this kind of white space, this empty kind of counterform area is. It's like enormous compared to this. Feels a little bit more. Um, compact here. Anyway, I find that kind of an interesting comparison to see how that that how yeah. shape cracked this curving inward, kind of like with the D that we looked at earlier. I don't know. What are your thoughts on these? <laughs> I think definitely that I would agree with you. Like, it's a little surprising considering the super economy of fit, right? Mm -hmm. That you they would go with an A of this this teardrop kind of Optima style A. Right for the point that you that you listed, which is it's going to induce a very huge counter space, negative space mm -hmm. area. I think they comp they try to harmonize for that with that square profile. Like, yeah. I think may, perhaps I mean I would have my hypothesis would be probably you could render this curve in the bowl into a square shape more easily with this profile yeah. with the yeah. teardrop shape. They'd be a little harder if you had a curve like this and have to square it at the end. It might be it might be too challenging or might not be the best result. That'd be my instinct, but why they chose that direction? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, but yes, that it's very apparently different, right, from uh, the Berlin the Berlinscape one. And again, this is this one's actually very consistent in its structure, right? It's like this is the stress right here. It's a little thickening right of the bowl over here, and it thins out, and then we got <laughs> this guy. It's following a very expected stress of how the weight's going to be distributed and harmonized. It's all, it's all, whoa, grand and dandy. Uh, again, <laughs> this is, a, I think, a moment where the they vary up the contrast model. Because remember, the D had a slight stress on it. This one is basically going, that's cool, and we're going to switch over now to an expansionist point of pen model to render that curve profile and then very rapidly define the bowl area, the thicker part, and then rapidly mm -hmm. switch back to the joints. Uh, so we can see that there's been an interplay of different contrast style models in, in Samuel Matt. Yeah, definitely. Wow. And now, like, since you wrote, put those little lines there, this is, you know, another fun thing to observe. Well, I just ruined it because now no one can see how thin it was. Um, but looking at the thicknesses of these three, you know, strokes, that's another place where people learning about type can observe kind of the differences in, uh, you know, what what looks right, what kind of differences might a designer make in these kind of stroke widths. Again, like not really paying attention. These are a little bit more similar here in the Berlingske. And again, we've got that like really tiny, thin little uh, point connection here. But um, that's, ah, these are fun observations. Gosh, I'm glad I don't do this every day because my brain would explode. It's a lot of details that I <laughs> don't really pay attention to when I'm looking at something. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> yes. That why it's a great lesson for everybody. Oh, yeah. golly, is this great. And, and the problem is, I mean, as a type designer, I think realistically, you would probably, you would do this, but by instinct, I think a lot of times. Yeah, you maybe. Know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's the topic. That's the kind of difficulty, right? Like we do things automatically because we're we're experienced. And that's what we do. But if we had if you ever sat us down and asked us to explain our thesis and our process, I don't think you would get this level of detail focus. Yeah, I I, yeah, I wouldn't automatically think. Oh, there's going to be like three different thicknesses in these strokes here in in this design. Like I wouldn't have even thought that. But there we go. There we go. There we are. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think we're up to our last letter. So, oh, are you let's. Ready? This is the most fun. This is bonkers. This is uh, absolutely bonkers. Ta da! <laughs> Whoa. So, a decision that is, you know, almost as crazy as the journal lowercase t that we were looking at a couple weeks ago. This is. Uh, sombrero t. I, yes. Yeah, sombrero t. I think this is, this takes the cake. This is unexpected. And this is a typeface used in a major newspaper. So obviously it works well because people have not rebelled and, you know, carried torches through the streets. So we've got this very <laughs> abstract R here. That's, I mean, how fun, how fun is that? How fun? 
Very we made a stencil. <laughs> we made yes. a stencil. Yeah. I can't believe it. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. It's fantastic too. You know, it's also, it's interesting because like when you eliminate the stroke or the, you know, little connector army stroke guy, it's like, look how narrow the R can be if you just represent it as a little dot ball terminal without a connection. Like, my God, it's narrow. Holy macaroni. And it's not, it looks, it's a letter I and the tittle fell off of it. It fell over to the side. It fell, it's drunk. Go it home. got drunk, fell over. Go yep. home, I. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'm not being constructive. Please put some, give some uh, actual structure to this slide. Sorry. I challenge that. That was very constructive. <laughs> it completely explained what was happening here. Oh, uh, it's great. But yeah, so, uh, again, I, I think it's going to, Let's put it this way. It, it was such a super surprise. Like, it's out of nowhere. It, it's, I, I can't, in the hands of a less talented designer, you would go, what is this? Why is this here? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think it's, uh, the, one, the fact that this got out the door and produced was amazing. God bless them for their client brief abilities that, because this is such a surprise out of nowhere. But we did see this can basically help it link to what we thought was surprising, which is, again, that A. Right, remember how the A was a ball terminal? Yeah, yeah. And that was like, what is this? Why is this here when everything else is like super beak mode or fangs? Right, right. It was a hint of what was to come with the R. But why didn't they disconnect the A? That would just be too loony. Too well, loony. Because that, what would that be? That would be like, that would be a stencil at that point. Yeah, yeah. Like R, this. you can get away with it, I think, because it's if it's narrow like this, you might not notice it. So yeah, it might, yeah, it might bleed out. Well, that's a really nice C you just drew, by the way. That looks good, yeah, right? Math yeah. skills. Oh my trackpad. <laughs> Shout out trackpad. <laughs> yep. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. So, Let's, so I think. Well, I, yeah. Oh, good. This is more a demo of more of like the flavoring of just like surprise. Like sometimes side faces, like again, there there are individual parts that are supposed to come together. So part of that is sometimes you want to spice it with a little surprise that you're like, what is this? Like <laughs> it, it just like. Uh, it's like adding salt to your to your recipe almost. It kind of spikes up everything else yeah. in relationship. Yeah. Um, just compare again, that to this, the summer edition. It's yeah. very straightforward. I mean, it's really not that complicated on this one. Um, the one note is again. I think a people people probably would by default assume, oh, it should be like one of these syrups, like really thin, right? <laughs> but it would completely it would like completely break. It wouldn't work. Uh, as a design they had they knew they had a they had to pump this up to get this roughly the same effect they have over here right you need some kind of punch up in the upper in the upper right corner of an r to make a read effectively sure. but again yeah it's still not like you know for the folks just learning about these relationships again this still isn't as thick as like you know the actual stem width or something i wonder how it compares to the n let me just scroll up really quick see if i can see but yeah it's a little Forgot how the end angle, thicker. Um, the shoulder. Yeah, it's a little thicker than the end. It's slightly different. You know, it's a little more curved. Like the the end. Um, if you remember, it was like a little bit more flat and then a more abrupt. This is like a little bit more, you know, curved um, up at the top rather than. I don't know what else yeah. they were done, but anyway, yeah, looks good. Looks stable. Yeah. I like. It. Yeah, and usually, by the way, on that note, it's probably because he had a, the joint had to go lower, right? They compensate. Sure. They probably had to take the shoulder, yeah. bring it in. Right, make an hour cut into the cut, cut into the mm -hmm. cut into the joint deeper down, and then make this thicker. Sure. Thicker to make yeah, and you can see like if down. you look if if you can zoom it, you know, if the people at home can maximize their video, they'll see there's like a little notch here at the, you know, that's something yeah, you the joint. see the little join notch to allow for. So you know, the ultimate ink trap is just eliminating that line altogether and having the the. Ball terminal float. That's the ultimate ink, ink yeah. trap. It's like a negative ink trap. It becomes. Yeah. I think nothing. we've seen that in like <laughs> uh, a, a gate or a ga type faces. I always forget the name of it, how to pronounce it. But um, I remember this a couple years ago. This a typeface was made for like three points, where literally like oh cool. Uh, think, yeah, it was madness. Like the G was like. Wow. Like, I, wonder, I wonder if we can find that. That would be cool. Yeah, that's neat. Like something like that, and then like done in three point, you can read it like oh, as a. I love it. That's so cool. Yes. All right. So that covers the R. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So now, Aaron, what can we? What, what What's our conclusion from looking at these guys? Well, you know, when I first saw them, I said, "Oh, they're they're so similar because they 
I was looking only at kind of like the vertical uh, proportions. Well, maybe not the caps, but you know, they had the large X height. I kind of sensed like a little bit similar width, but now that I've now that I've really looked at them, I'm kind of noticing a lot how uh, Berlingske is a lot more. You know, it's a lot more round. Has a lot more kind of airiness to it. There's a lot of space kind of happening in between these letters because of those tapered kind of long, you know, longer serifs than Sanamat, which is a lot more, I mean, it's squished in there. Everything's very snug against one another. Um, and like you said, because it's kind of based on a sans serif that they designed, they wanted, you know, everything's kind of a little bit more uh, compact and snugly fitting in this typeface and a lot more rectangular in profile, especially, you know, with those en the ends, we're noticing the curves of the, you know, the D, the E, it's, I don't know. They're, yeah. Now they seem a lot more different to me. I'm glad we took a look. <laughs> yes, and that's the purpose Yay. of Contribute. Yes, Yay. exactly. <laughs> what do you think? What did you notice now that you're seeing that? Oops, well, definitely oh, one is, as we, as we noticed, the letter fits much tighter on on someone, Matt. Um, <laughs> the, all the, basically, the same, you can take the same brief of exploring newspaper faces and come to very different conclusions. Right, and like within your limitations come the different solutions. I think for me, the biggest takeaway from this was very educational in terms of how kind of the top tier designers will like play with rules and variations you would normally not expect to be deviate from and yet still make a cohesive typeface out of it. Particularly with that contrast shift in the A and the G we saw. Uh, I think that was in the S and the, in the S too, I would say a little bit as well. I think it's, uh, been very educational just to see those differences as well. So, yeah, I think it's been a very educate. Isn't personally for me a very educational <laughs> contribute this up this week. So, oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, it's over. It's over. <laughs> yes, and you were worried. You were worried this episode was not going to be that long. I think it was. It's been a fantastic episode, Aaron. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. <laughs> and the dogs. And there's your dogs. I guess you got to go walk the dogs now. But this okay. is Thomas Shaw. <laughs> It was Aaron. Uh, this is Pontribute. Uh, feel free to comment on how you thought the episode was. I hope you enjoyed our mics. We got new mics for this episode, so I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and everyone have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>